aim at, I at can the speaker. Right. So, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Vagelis. This is my team, Pradeep Tanathinath, and we did something called recommendations using coupled matrix factorization. So, let me go through the introduction. Let's say we are Netflix, and we have movies, we have users. Uh, these users look uh, movies, and they rate them if they like them or not. So, uh, what do we want to do? We want to recommend movies to users, and according to what they've seen already, what they, their friends see, and uh, how uh, movies are similar to each other. So, there has been work on matrix filterization and collaborative filtering that works on uh, this matrix completion problem. Uh, and here's the question, what do we do if we also have some additional information about the movies? So, let's say, we, besides this rating that these users uh, provide, we also have some, let's say, genre information from IMDb or some other ratings from IMDb. So here we just provide a model that can handle this joint analysis of these different sources of data. And uh, we, we're going to show how we do this using a factorization model. So here's a more formal definition of what we do. We have, let's say this matrix X is the matrix uh, that uh, stores the Netflix data. The rows are the, the movies and the columns are the users. And each uh, coefficient is either the rating that somebody gave or zero, which means that this person hasn't seen the movie, hasn't rated it, so we don't know whether he likes it or not or would like it or not. So what we want to do is we want to fill in the zeros over there. And let's say Y is another matrix coming from IMDb. And uh, we have the rows are the same, uh, the same movies. And the columns could be some features. And because IMDb has uh, many, many different sources of data, we can find a lot of different features that we can use as columns. Uh, a set of features we used was the genre information and the rating that IMDb has. So the, the goal here is that we want to factorize those matrices together and uh, provide a, uh, by doing this lower rank factorization, get a uh, reconstruction of the matrix and what was going to be in the zero values is our recommendation for the movie. So here are our objective functions. First one is uh, the beast you see over there, which is uh, matrix X is Netflix, matrix Y is IMDb, and we break down X into AB transpose, and we break down Y into AC transpose, using A as a common factor, which means that we assume that uh, movies in both data sets share the co common low rank subspace. And uh, we use the Frobenius norm as a loss. I think Alex is going to disagree how good this is. But, you know, this is one thing that we can do. And uh, another loss function, another objective function that we use is pretty much the same as before, plus some uh, L1 norm penalties, which have been shown to provide sparser solutions to the model. Uh, a way to solve it now is uh, we use block coordinate descent, which means that uh, this might look hard to solve, but if we see that, if we fix, let's say, we need to optimize over A, B, and C, so if we fix B and C, then this is just a least squares regression problem. So we solve for A, and then we fix A and C, we solve for B, and we do it over, over and over again until we converge. Uh, same thing happens for, for function number two, uh, with the minor difference that uh, instead of a least squares regression problem, we have a lasso. And uh, Schutzer talked about lasso yesterday, so you probably know. So we can also solve it optimally. And uh, here's a snippet of our results. Uh, we use three baselines to compare against SVD, a non negative matrix factorization, and singular value thresholding, which is a specialized matrix completion algorithm. And the red stuff is our, uh, our two methods. And uh, the, the vertical axis is the RMSC of the missing values, and uh, the, the horizontal axis is uh, the number of missing ratings that we want to predict. And uh, this is for Netflix and IMDb using genres and ratings as the features, and we see that uh, our methods outperform the baselines in this case. But this is a, just a part of our results we have time to show to you. So, any questions? So, why? does the error decrease as you have more missing data? That, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but... <laughs> um, but this, <laughs> I know. Th this is weird, because if you have no data, shouldn't that, that, you sh that, that should give you, you know, the best results, so it's something is very strange. Yeah. I know, I know, but uh, <laughs> one explanation that you might give is that the more, uh, if you try to find uh, a few parameters, 
you might not be able to do as bad a job as you want to find more. I don't know. I, um, I need to investigate. You, you need to fix that for the final presentation. Anyway.